Mina, konbanwa, Jesus Freaking Gamer here. Joshua chapter 16, verse 10. And they did not drive out the Canaanites who dwelt in Gezer, but the Canaanites dwell among the Ephraimites to this day, and have become forced laborers. The rest of the chapter is essentially what I was talking about yesterday. Lots of what territories and what cities belong to which Israelites. <clears throat> and there's a theme coming up here that's going to be repeated in many, many chapters. And it's something I've already noticed this has happened either two or three times already. Where the Israelites, again, they're supposed to kill everyone in Canaan. A genocide. And they are supposed to completely and totally take over, leave no one alive. It's only supposed to be them because the land is to be theirs. And if anyone's left remaining, those people will be a thorn and a snare in their sides. And they will draw the Israelites away from God. I, can, I will deal with the genocide thing later at another certain point. Um, that was not the focus today, and I will, pre I will preach on that at another time. I will try to cover that to the best of my ability. But right now I want to focus on the way that they're going into the promised land, and it's like they're already messing up. They're already getting off to a bad start. They're already letting go the enemies that God said, you need to get rid of these guys or they're going to be a problem. And they didn't. So it's just like, yeah. When God tells you to get rid of something and you don't get rid of it, it's going to be a problem. He knows best. He knows what's ahead. He knows what's going to happen if you do that thing he's telling you not to do. And he knows what will happen if you don't do that thing he's telling you to do. He knows what's ahead. He knows if it's going to be good for you or bad for you. And if he tells you to do it, you need to do it. He said, wipe those people out, get them out of the promised land, and they didn't. And that was a problem not for just one or two tribes of Israel. Every single tribe of Israel left a few people behind. Just maybe not a ton. I don't know how many. The Bible doesn't say, but just a few. Just the little things. Just a few things came in. And those little things destroyed them, as the book of Judges is going to tell. They would fall away, worship the gods of the land of, the land of Canaan, of the Canaanites they left behind, and then God's wrath and judgment was poured out on them because they lived in sin and disobedience. So, that's just something I've noticed a few things. It's, it's happened like once every few chapters up to this point, I'm like, you know, now's a really good time to go ahead and dive into that and go ahead and like begin to open that up. I may cover a little bit more later. I may not. We'll see. But yeah, when God tells you to get rid of something, you need to get rid of it. Whether it's whether it's, you know, some addiction or some fun thing you're doing, maybe isn't too clean or too good for you, even to the people that's in your life. Not telling you to kill them. Not saying that. That is not our command. Again, our weapons of warfare are not carnal or fleshly. We don't fight with weapons nowadays. Our warfare takes place in the spirit. And it takes place in the mind and in the heart. So when you're with people that you shouldn't be around, they're pulling you down, they're pulling you away from Christ, you get rid of those people. You cut off your ties with them. And you live a separate life, a holy life, a pure life. And if there's a fine line between evangelizing the lost and spending time with them, like I do my friend Robert, when I, who I play Dark Souls with, but he's not pulling me down. He's not leading me into some sinful lifestyle. We're playing video games together. And he lets me talk about Jesus pretty much whenever I want to, because whenever I'm with someone, they're going to hear about Jesus. That's pretty much inevitable. That's pretty much everything for today. Thank you guys very much for watching. I love you guys. God bless.